Hello everyone, I'm Eve Parker Finley. I am a musician, comedian, creator of many kinds, based in Jojage, Montreal. I'm so excited to be moderating this conversation with Zoon and the team behind this wonderfully moving music video from Manitou, who are one of the round eight recipients of the MVP Project Grant. I'm joined today by Daniel Monkman, AKA Zoon, as well as the production, as well as the production team of Trevor Blumas, Nick Harris, and Zach Kosky. I'd love it if you all can introduce yourself uh, and talk about what your role was with this project. Um, Daniel, do you want to start? Yeah, I'm Daniel Monkman, also known as Zun Gadiawin, my traditional name, and um, from Winnipeg, Manitoba, currently living in Toronto, Ontario. And my role was, um, I guess, actor and artist and um, and stunt person, I guess, too. I feel like we did a few stunts. My name is Trevor Blumis, and I am the director of this video uh, and editor, I guess, as well. Um, Zach? Hello, I'm Zachary Kosky, and I was the director of photography for this video, and I'm based out of Toronto. Last but not least, Nick. I'm Nick Harris, and I was the producer on this video and production manager. Awesome. I'm also in Toronto. Great. Um, thank you all so much for being here. Uh, I want to start by saying that this music video is so truly moving. I was like absolutely spellbound from the like first second that it started when I watched it. I love its portrayal of community, of struggle, of friends, of literal and metaphoric drowning. I feel like there's so much for us to get into around production and the technical aspects, as well as the like personal and emotional aspects of the video. Um, but with all of that, I would love to just start at the beginning. So where did the idea for the video come from? I had an experience of drowning when I was younger and I always wanted to make a music video like that. And um, it was a really traumatic experience in my life and it always kind of stuck with me. But I never told Trevor that, and then Trevor came in with the idea for for Underwater, so it just felt like this deep connection subconsciously. And um, and then we just ran with that, with that. and uh, obviously Trevor and all the team came up with a lot of the treatment and made it into what it is. Trevor, so you came up, you, you brought, you came in with the idea of Underwater, where did that come from? I think it, honestly, it really, the, my my after first listening to the song that Daniel sent me, it just had this really ethereal um, fluidity to it, and um, I'm also a musician, so I I tend to kind of merge the way I visualize a song and the way it it always has a musical sensibility. And the track that Daniel sent me, there wasn't a lot of beats, there wasn't a lot of you know. Um, points where I could see a lot of action happening on these beats and it just felt fluid. So underwater and also based on conversations like the song um, has a very personal story for Daniel and, and Daniel told me the story and imagining that perspective of this character that Daniel was telling in the song mixed with the music, it just underwater felt like the right thing. And then, yeah, suddenly we found out that Daniel also had a personal experience underwater and it just felt there's like an element of fate to it. Yeah. Also, the current record for holding your breath on a film set is around seven minutes um, by an actor. How close did you come to that shooting this? Because it seems like you spent a lot of time underwater. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I mean, we spent hours and hours in the water. Maybe like, I don't know, maybe seven hours or something, maybe in a total or something. I don't know. I got comfortable in the water, too, at one point. It was almost warmer to be in the water than out of the water but i think holding my breath maybe only in like seven seconds <laughs> or something you know because like i could build up a good enough you had to release some of the water just to get under because if you had too much water it made you like it felt like my body kept wanting to go up and then um getting those weighted bean bags helped a lot too but i think maybe like 10 seconds or something. Yeah, wait, so weighted bean bags. Talk to me about that. I feel like that is opening up the kind of the technical challenges of shooting underwater, which I am super fascinated by from a 
like camera perspective, from a sound perspective, from a acting perspective. Why don't we start from the like visual? Like, how do you actually work around the idea of filming underwater? I don't know if Zach, maybe you want to take that question. Yeah. So um, when Trevor came to me with this treatment, um, I was unbelievably excited, but also very, very concerned because this was like a new thing for me. Um, but I spoke to a lot of like really talented people that had experience shooting underwater. Um, eventually. We connected with Carly, who was our underwater camera operator, who brought out a team. Um, the main concern being safety. You know, Daniel doesn't have experience uh, filming underwater, as most people would not. Um, we really wanted to make sure Daniel was safe. There's a huge concern with fatigue. You know, after doing many takes, and you don't know how someone's physically going to stand up to those conditions. So once we kind of figured out that you know Daniel could be safe, then we kind of proceeded with. Um, figuring out how to execute it technically, which ended up being like a James Cameron style underwater housing for the camera. Um, we had a very involved underwater lighting system that was uh, very complicated and specialized. You know, you can't transmit radio signals underwater. So everything was cabled. There's like a big ring of lighting down there for all those like theatrical sort of effects. We had a fixture overhead of the pool just kind of, um, you know, and then dealing with safety, like keeping everything elevated with GFCIs, like this is really an undertaking that you need the proper um, professionals to manage, um, which, you know, can be budget challenging. So we really had to like be creative in other ways where Nick really helped us out. Um, and we, you know, we, we felt very confident that we were doing things safely and properly. There was no shortcuts to something like this because that could, um, you know, that could be life altering. If I can just add one thing to that too, Zach is like, you know, of course we started with safety, um, always first. Um, but then even technical challenges, like you can't, f there's a, there's a casing for the camera, you know, and Zach can speak more to that, but everything has to be meticulously put together before the shoot. You know, it's, it's just, um, there was just so much attention to detail, I think, outside of uh, your average shoot. Um, and then, you know, it's not just like change one small thing in the housing. If you have to change something, you're risking uh, flooding everything and losing. This was a, a one day only shoot. Like it had to happen. It had to happen on that day. Um, and really like, there was sort of, there was this, um, it's like saying Macbeth, like you don't do it right. It's like, um, uh, Carly said, you don't talk, you don't say it. You don't talk about flooding because it can't happen. And the only time on a shoot that anyone ever said it, it happened. Yeah. I mean, on that, on that question of like, like expertise and even budgeting and like the team, Nick, I would love to hear more about like, how did you go about finding the, the right people to come in to do this production that would have the the technical knowledge to do it but also like um the artistic eye for for a video like this well i mean a lot of that comes down to trevor and zach and zach connecting us with carly who um he's like this is the person to have on set and i think uh that was very apparent early on. She doesn't mess around. And admittedly, it was like, well, this is very serious. And then you see why it's very serious, you know, because like these are, they're, they're people under, underwater. You've got to make sure that everyone's safe. And, um, and, and all the things I just spoke about, you know, you, you really have to, uh, you have to have someone that knows what they're doing and specializes in that. And Zach, uh, in his community and, uh, the people that he, you know, uh, she just had a reputation, I think. And, and, and it was very clear that there's one person that we wanted to work with and we were lucky enough to work with her. I just wanted to say, um, that there were also complications like insurance wise, you know, this is something that is very hard to insure <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, the whole shoot was kind of like teetering on this edge of like, can we even do this? Like, you know, we've we've come so far, we have these ideas, we've got crew, can we insure it? And uh, that all kind of like landed like last minute, we were very lucky that uh, Nick was able to get us sorted. Um, 
because you just can't do it otherwise. Like you can't bring out an underwater team without being able to ensure the production properly. It's too big of a liability. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, and I think a lot of people might just say, well, it's just, you know, it, like it was shot in a pool. We didn't want it to look that way. Uh, and we didn't want it to feel that way. Um, you know, we're going to do everything safely, but it's like, it's not that simple. There's always, there's always, um, as Zach was saying, the insurance. And as soon as you even talk about water, it's like quadruple your insurance rates and things like that. Yeah. There's this, uh, really funny moment from the behind the scenes footage where, um, Daniel, you're in the pool and, uh, you say something along the lines of like, I love this. <laughs> and it's like just this like real joy. And I think that's that that is so amazing and funny. But also at the same time, like the the perf like the performance of the shot is actually quite like tumultuous and like quite dark and struggling. So um, Trevor, I would actually love to hear about how like how you approach directing in a situation like that and how you like get everyone on set and Daniel in front of the camera to get to that place where you can actually get like the shot. So many things technically needed to come together to, to really pull this off. And the same thing happens in front of the camera. Like we were really blessed to have a performer like Daniel who's so professional and however um, Daniel was feeling internally, it, it, he was able to present such a professionalism and, you know, get into the character, the performance of it all. And so, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I wasn't in the pool, so it was kind of restrictive when I was giving Daniel direction on how to move their body and the struggle and stuff like that. I was, it was, and, and we didn't have a lot of, you know, we were really crunched for time. We had a very ambitious shooting schedule, so we didn't have a lot of time to just rehearse things out. Um, so... Yeah, it was. I think it was just finding that energy at first, and then just immediately being able to see, like when something clicked, we could see it in the monitor, and it'd be like, okay, that's it. Like, find that. Let's let's kind of repeat that energy, um, you know, in certain places. What did you do after to like come down from that experience? Like after the shoot? Yeah. Um, well, I actually had to <laughs> run to rehearsal right after, and then drive back to FME. So it was like. <laughs> And then to Montreal after that. And it was like, so my, my journey didn't end in quite until I got home back in Toronto after that. But I just remember laying on my bed and like feeling like, holy crap, I've, I feel like I've, I've been lived many lives this last few days. There was one moment and, and to reference the video specifically, we almost in some ways shot it in chronological order. So at the end of the video, when Daniel emerges from the water and there's that like moonlight that yellow moonlight on daniel's face um that was very that was all real actually i think that was the end of the shoot date daniel had just transcended into the state of zen buddha um and you, you know just so unfazed and just it was like elevated on some level and so i think like it ended up being quite method at the end this like experience that daniel's having in the video kind of looking up and just this exhaustion and relief is i think so real actually totally yeah i remember looking back because i watched the video yesterday and and remembered the last shot of like coming out of the pool and and that's like actually that's when we took off the the the, the tent over the pool too right so it was like that was a real backdrop of like uh, darkness that's really cool yeah I, I remember um kind of going over to daniel and like kind of like softly asking like hey do you mind if we get like one more shot and daniel's just like let's go like this sort of crazy um energy this like third la you know last wind like it was like this the, there were so many of those moments you know um there's a moment in the pool where Daniel kept coming up and was so eager to go back down and continue filming that I wasn't sure Daniel was breathing and actually gaining any air <laughs> when they came up. I was like, I don't know 
if this is working, like you're kind of just coming up and immediately submerging and like kind of up and down. And, but it was, you know, all of those things like create the, the, those moments that we've captured and it was like absolutely incredible. And I think Daniel's energy is what allowed the, the team to rally and kind of accomplish everything because they had a, a pretty physical time as well. And I think that they were, you know, not going to complain when they saw what um, our artist was doing underwater. So they, they all really stepped up in a big way, um, kind of from the top down. Wow. Um, I'm also really, you brought up the idea of like the abyss and um, that really comes through in the video. And I would love to hear about how you achieved that because this is an outdoor pool, if I'm not mistaken, right? And you shot like during the day as well. So like, I would love to hear about how that real abyss um, look was achieved. Yeah, so um, when Trevor and I were talking about this originally, um, you know, knowing that we'd be shooting this in a pool um, for a number of reasons, one of them just being clarity of water, um, you know, lighting control, like we can't go to a lake and accomplish this. Um, I knew right away that it was either going to be like an overnight shoot, which is brutal for Daniel, you know, let alone the team trying to perform, you know, on an opposite sleep schedule, I think would be even more difficult than it was. Um, so we chose to kind of tent this pool. I can't remember the length of the pool, but I think it was like nearly like 40 feet, um, completely blacked it out. So overhead black, sides black. Um, and really like when we got this thing tented, there was no light in there. You would walk in there and it was like being in a nightclub or something. It was just pitch black. Uh, well, a nightclub because we had crazy lights going. Um, and then when you would walk outside, like your eyes would hurt. Like you'd have to put sunglasses on. Like there was that much of a difference. Um, and so what we wanted to do is open it, um, open the video up where you could see the light coming from, you know, overhead, like the surface as if it's like the sun and then it would get darker and then there'd be more like under lighting as you get into the abyss. Because the whole thing really only takes place in like this like kind of shallow pool. Once you look at someone's full body and you think about framing above and below, like you run out of space very quickly. So the camera is almost in the exact same position for the entire video. And I think, you know, those lighting changes are what kind of give it some sort of depth um, because there's no other way to achieve it. And I think we I think we did a pretty good job. Like, I think uh, it does feel like we're progressing throughout the video, which is something we really want to make sure it wasn't just like repetitive shots. And, um, you know, that pool, luckily, like Nick's family has this pool that was painted black, which is amazing um there were moments where we had to like do further blacking out but um that really helps you know not having that like aqua like teal liner around the pool like that would have been nearly impossible to cheat so um yeah amazing location that nick was able to provide us um nick can you actually talk about the 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 location um because i was curious about like where this pool is and and it felt like a personal pool but i just like didn't know whose personal pool it was so yeah i mean my uh my parents live out in the country on the which used to feel more like you were out in the country but uh london is expanding of course and so it it's sort of on the outskirts of byron between uh byron and kamoka um and uh the pool is just down sort of in the woods like you know and um we you know we were lucky uh my parents have always been so supportive of of projects of any kind um uh arts projects and things and uh so i just asked and absolutely no problem um i don't know that they were uh they were surprised at the scale uh, when the transport trucks drove in the night before with the gear. And it, actually, I was too, <laughs> even as the producer. Uh, I'm like, this is a lot of gear. And then you see everything sort of um, uh, be tented around the pool and, and the scale of everything uh, come to life. It was, it was really cool. Uh, but we were lucky that you know, because this pool was one, it was blacked out, painted black. Uh, and it has been, it's a really old pool, uh, forever. Uh, it's been painted black just 
to keep it hotter, you know, because it's in this open area uh, and the sun comes down and it, and it, and it heats it. So, um, but then all around, it's just forest too. So there was really no, uh, you know, any angles once the tent came off, you know, there was just a little more flexibility with, I thought at the time, anything that, uh, the creatives, uh, wanted to do, they kind of could just do whatever they needed, you know, and it being in a remote area, um, really we, there was no time limit, uh, and there was no, I don't know, noise or external factors or anyone that we could really bother. We, we really could just, um, do whatever we needed there. I mean, also speaking of like family, um, I would love to talk about the other characters that are in the video because I feel like there's this, I mean, there's obviously this real like personal emotional connection and feeling that comes through the video. And these other characters really feel like deeply loved or and loving friends, family. Um, can you talk us through like who those people are and how you went about casting? Sure. I'll take that one. Um, yeah. I mean, it, 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 this video really was a family, a community effort and a family effort. And it's reflected in the cast and the experience of the production as well. Um, the people that appear on camera are, it's again, I'm from London as well. London, Ontario, another fluke. Nick's from London. Uh, one thing Nick didn't mention, which is beautiful and how we were able to cut costs aside from just shooting at his family house, but his, uh, family came together and was actually like the cooks for like fed the, the crew. Um, and so like there, his family was on set and, and, uh, so, and Daniel has a, a big London connection too, through one of the bands Daniel plays in is rooted in London. So it's really a community effort there. Um, for the two boys, those are actually like, uh, my good friend, Lido Pimienta, another Toronto, uh, another Canadian musician. Um, her son Lucien is in the video. He's one of the boys, and her her nephew uh, Orlando, and I knew that they were London based. I knew that they're no strangers of being in front of the camera, and probably would take a real interest in this. And we already had. I have a, a personal relationship with both those boys, so that trust factor is already there. Um, they were able to like trust me if I'm like you know Zach and I like try this, try this, and they were like very willing sports. And then Rita, the uh, the older woman um, on camera, was amazing connection through my mom, who um, is a coworker and is um, is a is a an elder in the community, a teacher, an educator, and instantly I think just embodied this character that I felt needed to be in in the story. And when I was talking to Daniel about it. He, you know about this this woman that I met and could is, could, could potentially be in it anyway. It, I'm so grateful that she was a willing participant to be in the video. She just had such a great quality on camera, such a wisdom about her. And then the other three people are actually like one of the members is one of the people in the video is uh, a fr uh, well they're all friends of friends or in this community that Daniel and I are part of in London. Um, one of them is in a in Daniel's band, a <laughs> bandmate. So yeah, I think it just it, the way it comes across in the video is very sincere. These are all friends and family uh, be, of of all of us. Did you have any like challenges though of like like of of working with people who? um aren't necessarily like actors i guess yeah i mean so with rita for example rita we did shoot the video in two days the pool stuff was all in one day and then the the stuff the the one-on-one -on -one stuff these memories if you will were shot a different day so rita was on set for both of these days and in the pool was one challenge rita is a physical for rita she had to for, for example like le you know be leaning over the pool reaching in and, you know, and she's, she's quite old and that's all. And to be leaning over for a while is there's that physical aspect, but I mean, Rita was just such, it, it wasn't really hard to get Rita to get to the place. I think we needed to, she, she just happens to be such an open person on camera. And so like honest and revealing that. And I think she just has this lived experience that when I was telling her the story of the video and what it is about and Daniel and her were able to bond as well. I think she just was able to bring this, kind of knowledge to exactly what needed to be told for the video. So for her, it was quite easy um, because she was kind of in, in a sense playing herself. But for the other, the three kids, the three, let's, the people closer to our age, for example, 
it was a bit tough because we needed to, to to get them from zero to a hundred. Like it's not just like we're not easy. We're not we're trying to film these very heightened moments of like. Um, these kind of like excerpts of like um, memory where they're all having a really good time. So there's definitely this barrier you have to break. And and I didn't really know those three that well. Either did Zach, and it, it was the two of us filming them. So it really had to we had to really break some kind of boundaries right away to get them to kind of feel uh, open enough to kind of get that experience of what it's like to be driving around in a car together, having a good time, or just jamming at a house, listening to music. Like these are these experiences we wanted to capture. And those are experiences you only get with close friends when you're just having these very, you know, open, uh, experiences with friends. So I'm sure it wasn't easy for them, but I, they did an amazing job. The two boys were just, I, like I said, I know them quite well and they, uh, I know exactly what, what kind of personalities they are when they're playing, and I was able to get that from them pretty quickly. Um, keeping in mind that we want um, this series to help like future creators um, in creating visual art and music videos, I would love to hear from each of you like a sort of final thought about something that you've learned through creating this music video and something that um, you're left thinking about. Um, for your next project? I think, I think when it comes to projects, um, you know, you don't always want to be going like, Oh, you know, trying to ask too many favors and stuff. But the thing is, is if you leave yourself open to reaching out to the people in your orbit, uh, and your family, really cool things can happen. Something like at that scale where you see all the people moving and constantly working, it's, it's just like I learned to um, just be present and and be positive. Uh, I think a huge thing for me is um, being selective about the projects that you work on, really um, working with the artists you want to achieve something special for. Like, I, you know, I said it earlier, but I think it comes from the top. If... Um, if you're trying to do something for an artist whose work you love and you know you like their attitude, then um, it's much simpler. Uh, my background's in you know like DIY community art projects, and so I think this pro this video specifically had th these two worlds where it was we were working with on set with very very professional, experienced people who work in a lot of big budget commercial work, and. Um, and then this real family community effort with people who've never been on a film set at all and together. And I find some of that bigger budget community work, uh, co uh, big budget pr professional work lacks some of that real, um, sincerity and community that some of these more DIY projects come together where you're like really propping up a budget, like a project with sticks and glue. Um, but that backbone is, is the thing that's the supportive kind of safety net that you're, you're around family, peers, people that you trust so that you can dive into these really high stakes professional uh, projects with this confidence, you know, that you're being cradled by community. Well, on that note, thank you all so much for taking the time to talk about this beautiful, beautiful video. Um, and yeah, thanks for spending the time. It was really great.